from the Mercy One Studio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Also tune in Sundays at 1030 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists and Dream Dirt, Farm Real Estate and Auction Services. Good morning. Welcome to Iowa Catholic Radio, 11.50 a.m., 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM. Father PJ, good morning. Good morning, Father. Good to have you this morning. So we have uh, very interesting people in the studio today with us. We have two very special guests. Okay. The last two weeks, of course, we were joined by uh, Nick Stark, my seminarian uh, for the summer at Christ the King. Our other housemate uh, is joining us this morning. He's assigned to St. John's of Norwalk uh, this summer, Deacon Reed Flood. Welcome, Deacon. Thank you. Thank you, Father PJ. It's good to be here, Father. Good to have you here as well. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestowed in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Food and Food fast. And fast. That's right. Very interesting topic today to talk about it. So, first of all, how was your weekend meals? You know, um, we had a, a terrific little dinner party last night. Uh, uh, several priests came over, and uh, Nick and I uh, resourced several leftovers um, <laughs> to, to, to make um, uh, a meal for everyone. I'm going on vacation later in the week, and so I wanted to make sure that the, the fridge was cleaned out. Honestly, what sort of inspired the episode was living uh, you know, with two new housemates, and of course, Father Ronaldo, who lives with us as well, um, just sort of getting used to sharing kitchen and fridge space with each okay, other. Okay. Some things seem to live in the fridge for... Rather long time, take Too on long. new life, right? <laughs> Start moving on their own. Other things seem to always move out rather quickly. And and just the whole uh, custom of fasting and feasting. We've had several conversations about it um, just in the house. And uh, the readings for the coming Sunday seemed uh, appropriate to cause us to reflect on the role of food in our spiritual lives. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky to talk about fasting during the summertime because it's uh expression of abundance <laughs> incredibly so it's good to talk about it because it's part of our uh, spiritual formation fasting to keep in control our body as well mm -hmm. especially in these overweight seasons you know right no so 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 you know we we all struggle in the virtue of temperance and growing to know uh, when we should eat how much we should eat what we should eat it's nick you're not alone i, I see a pat in your belly but i've, <laughs> I've got the same problem and uh, Reed's skinnier than you and I, but I've seen him put down more than both of us put together. Uh, so it's really unfair. <laughs> so I, if, they, if they could do, like, metabolism transplants, I'd be a much happier a little priest. But um, I guess I, maybe I'd simply open this to you two guys. Um, how have you noticed the role of food change in your spiritual life, especially in the course of priestly formation? Oh, well, I mean, for sure, it's just something that you have to get used to as a priest that people will... Um, just throw food at you, basically. Um, and so I think having a healthy attitude with food um, is very important. And so I think that's been um, a, you know, a theme in seminary for sure. But for me, I was thinking about this question as like the spiritual life and food both come in seasons. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, it's not... I, I like to cook, and there's not too much um, in the way of uh, preventing you from getting, like, an eggplant in December or something like that. Um, but uh, just especially because of preservatives and, the, you know, the way the world works now. But in the spiritual life, you know, in the same way, sometimes you can't, um, uh, you know, sometimes you can't do certain things at certain times. And um, sometimes you go through pe periods of... Um, fasting that aren't your choice desolations mm -hmm. that aren't your choice and so i think back in the day people would have been much more attuned to that fact but i think food and the spiritual life have that sort of connection i remember back when i first started saying the office um friday night right compline the psalm is, is psalm 22 right the lord's prayer from the cross um and it it always felt off because friday nights in in our culture are usually celebratory football games and parties and this kind of thing right at the end of the week and I said to my confessor at the time, this is really hard to pray. And he said, brother, 
if you can't pray it for yourself, pray it for somebody whose Friday night isn't as good as yours is. And I think there's something there's something of that going on with food too, right? So sometimes we fast, if not because we're trying to prepare for something very specific, we fast in solidarity with those who don't get to choose when their fast comes. Reed? Yeah. For me, uh it's you know, it's funny because fasting has been a part of my life, but not necessarily a spiritual part of my life. I grew up and I was a wrestler and making weight was one of the main factors of your season. And you really had to be disciplined with what you ate and what time you ate. So I was fasting, and a lot of people do fast nowadays, too, for health reasons. But it's interesting. We will fast for just about any reason imaginable (laughs) except for the spiritual life. And coming into seminary and learning more and more about uh, the role that fasting can have in our spiritual lives, I mean, just look at our daily Eucharist that we receive. It's no coincidence that Jesus chose to come to us as food. Mm -hmm. So therefore, how I manage my food intake has really like serious spiritual side effects, you know, really serious spiritual implications. So now what I've been trying to do is just even mindful, intentional eating and not just snarfing my food, which I can fall into that trap, right? But uh, to be deliberate in all of my uh, food intake. Also, it seems very important to, in a very remarkable manner, said that many people during this time of pandemic have been suffering about food, you know. So fasting also is connect myself with many people around the world, not necessarily close to my family or things like that, but at least a lot of people suffering about food itself and not easy to find food for many people around the world. Even even here in the city, right here in Des Moines, we right. have people who um, social services have been scaled back. It's hard for the food pantries to get food to people safely. And it's uh, hard for people, um, some people, to get to the grocery store still. And so... Um, uh, Tell their people, especially, you know? Yeah, exactly. And because of the pandemic, there's a pretty much going to be a global food shortage. Um, not because there's any kind of blight or famine, but because, yeah, the services just aren't able to run as efficiently. So food plays a central role in our spiritual lives. I think it's worth reflecting on sort of the the role that eating and choosing not to eat can have in us long term. We'll cover that after the break. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Thank you, Dream Dirt Farm Real Estate and Auction, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio and be not afraid. Dream Dirt Farm Real Estate and Auction is a licensed, accredited, and experienced farm brokerage and auction company. Learn more at DreamDirt.com, including their online auction house, FarmBid, at bid.dreamdirt.com. Dream Dirt Farm and Equipment Auction Services, Farm Auctions, done right. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee Eddie in the Morning is provided by Blessman International. The coronavirus has impacted lives in Iowa and around the world. This is especially true in rural South Africa, where COVID-19 restrictions have led to vulnerable children being hospitalized due to starvation. To combat this hunger, Blessman International now offers a program called One Child at a Time. You can sponsor a child in South Africa for $1 a day. Learn more at blessmaninternational.org. Blessmaninternational.org. Is it time for a new roof? Then it could be time for you to get to know Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company entering its 30th year of business. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at bigredq des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. What is the best gift ever? Well, some might say a Catholic education, and I agree. But if you think you can't afford Catholic education, think again. Apply for CTO, and you could receive up to half your tuition for kindergarten through 12th grade. More information is online, ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. (laughs) Welcome back to 
Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Father, according to the Holy Mother of the Church, the experience of fasting through the different signs has been in a very remarkable, inspirational for us in these days. For instance, St. Basil and St. Augustine as well. Right. So I came across this passage from an old homily of St. Augustine's. Fasting cleanses the soul, raises the mind, subjects one's flesh to the spirit, renders the heart contrite and humble, scatters the clouds of concupiscence, quenches the fires of lust, and kindles the true light of chastity. Enter again into yourself. So the fathers of the church universally recognize the value of fasting, and, and we see fasting you know, throughout the whole of the scriptures. Um, in some ways, the rabbis talked about life in the garden as a kind of uh, preview of what fasting would ultimately be like. Um, and then, of course, they were forced to fast afterwards because they had to get their own food in a way that wasn't provided for them. Um, there was certainly fasting uh, on the ark um, during the, the, the period of, of Noah. And, and, of course, the great fast, right, that, that, that Moses accomplishes on the mountain in preparation to receive the law. This, this being sort of fulfilled, right, in our Lord's own 40-day sojourn in the desert. And so, so fasting is woven throughout and was an essential part of the early church. But I think understanding the reasons for the fast, you know, Reed said before the break, people fast for anything except spiritual reasons these days, and he's heard me say that. That's largely true, I think. Um, but, uh, but, but, but understanding the spiritual fruits that can come from this, you know, it, it focuses the mind. It, it, it increases our ability for self-control, not only relative to food, but for other things. There are certain uh, sins that always get fasting as a penance for me, and there's a reason for it. Um, It renders the heart contrite and humble, right? If I recognize I'm not even control really of my own bodily appetites, there's nothing that makes me more honest about myself, which is why he talks about sort of the cell of self-knowledge here. So I guess what I'd open uh, to you guys is, is as you've experienced fasting, especially probably more intentionally these last maybe four or five years, what, um, what's it been like and what spiritual fruit has it borne in your own life? Mm. I think for me, uh, in my minor seminary, they were very, and also in my major seminary too, they were very big on observing the fast days, the mandatory fast days. So for Good Friday, they recommend go the whole 24 hours if you can, um, not like a challenge or anything. But for me to actually enter into that too, and I almost had this phobia of going without food, uh, it, it was, oh, you know, I got all psyched up for it. But then it was interesting to see what, just to observe what was happening within me. Uh, your appetite eventually goes away after a little bit. Your body sort of calms down because it's not having to digest something. And you really turn into like this listening. Yeah, like you begin listening more and it, and it and really opens you up and it makes you want to pray more. Whereas if I just go and have a massive Thanksgiving feast, for instance, I just want to take a nap. You know, I <laughs> I, I, I just want to, yeah, rest. So, so it really opens me up. It channels my hunger towards the Lord. Uh, and not just, you know, a Twinkie. <laughs> Nick? Um, I didn't do any strength and conditioning in high school because I was a band and choir nerd. But I know Reed <laughs> did a ton of that well, kind of yeah. stuff. But for me, fasting, I mean, fasting has got to be the most common type of, like, bodily mortification. And so um, for me, at least I've taken taken fasting with food and other things like video games and things that I really like to do. Um, and Staining from those things for a while, practicing mortification in the little things I have found has actually helped me to say no to bigger temptations. Um, and so it's more, it's kind of like strength and conditioning when, when you uh, say no to, um, you know, a piece of cake or you say no to playing video games all night or um, something of the like, you know, you'll be more prepared in the future to say no to the things that are, you know, truly destructive to your spiritual life. Mm. St. Basil uses the image of, of the gymnasium, right? He says, fasting um, gives birth to profit, strengthens the powerful. Fasting makes lawgivers wise. Fasting is the good safeguard for the soul, steadfast companion for the body, weapon for the valiant, and a gymnasium for athletes. And I think it's really helpful because I'm like you, Nick. I wasn't especially athletic as a kid. But um, as an adult, fasting has given me a kind of an outlet to really exercise my body. And I think it's important, you know, every year when Lent comes up, we always tell people, it's not just about food, you know, give up your favorite TV show or whatever. And and that's useful. Those things aren't bad at all. But there is something about just refusing yourself food that, 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 that attaches to something that is much more basic 
than the rather complex desire for a particular storyline or a particular actor, or actress, or a particular distraction, right? Because um, you need food. You, your body tells you to have food for a reason, right? And so to say, no, I'm not going to be mastered by this present desire right now does something like nothing else does. And I think our immediate response Oh, well, fasting's dumb, and I don't understand why I have to do this. And like, I'm a perpetual twelve-year-old or something, right? It's I. I think that tells us way more about ourselves than whatever the thing is that we're trying to substitute the fast for. Mm. I love that because it's like the master-slave relationship. You know, is is the food my master, and am I the slave, or am I, <laughs> or or is the food meant to serve, serve me? me? You know, service, dinner service, right? So, uh, yeah. Good insight. Wow. Not just me, but you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, Reed uh, is quite the forager, and he has uh, very graciously helped us find good mushrooms this summer um, that are are helpful for us. And I I really honestly, apart from the delicious taste of the mushrooms themselves, um, eating something that was really the result of our hands – um, or the, of God's hands, you know, that, that, that you gathered. Um, then we had uh, green beans last night that came from the, the garden there at the parish. But having this tangible human connection to the food that we consume, that does something to us too that's very, very different than, you know, walking to a store and pulling something right. off a shelf. Mm-hmm. More homemade food, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Father, um, do you have any insights maybe that, that you could draw from your own experience of Hispanic culture? Mexican food, I try to fast in front of spicy food because <laughs> it hurt me a lot in my stomach. But it's another money how we can learn to involve ourselves in another culture, to understand a little bit more the, the community that we call in to serve on working with them. Remember that we are in Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM. Be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Faith on Trial provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. Information about Pharmatan and other products at ImogeneIngredients.com. Paul and Paul are members of St. Augustine's Knights of Columbus and encourage their brother knights to keep standing for their faith. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics, Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you online at mercydesmoines.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. SVDPDSM.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. Welcome back to Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Uh, Deacon, could you please help us to read the gospel? Absolutely. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down and put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. 
you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. So this pearl of great price, of course, is, is found ultimately in the Lord Jesus himself. And the um and and our willingness to give up everything for our relationship with him is is what's really most essential here you know our people um experience something in the midst of the pandemic which none of us have ever lived through before um maybe personally we've experienced but none of, we've never lived through it collectively and that is this sort of grand eucharistic fast which went for several months that so many people without, went without the gift of holy communion for so long and so um, I, I, I guess I, I want to just open it to the, the whole group here, sort of your reflections on, on what other people have said and what, what, it, what it was like to not be able to receive Holy Communion for a long time. And then because we're talking about fasting relative to feasting, um, what it was like when we were able to commune people again once we started opening church. Will be a very simplistic response, but we have the spiritual communion as well. And this spiritual communion helped us to encounter Jesus when physically or sacramentally is not accessible. And this part has been very difficult to sure. teach the people, to help in the people that you are allowing to pray with us online when the circumstances like pandemia doesn't help us to join together the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Finally, is the encounter with Jesus as well. Mm-hmm. What, um, what was it like for you guys as you were coming back from seminary? Did you have a prolonged period without Holy Communion, or was it ever more than just a few days? I was lucky in that our quarantine at St. Paul, we were able to have Mass every day. And again, for me, we were able to have Mass, thank goodness, because I wasn't without a priest for a while. But what was interesting was actually from my canonical retreat, getting ready to be ordained uh, as a deacon, all of the monks, all the priests in Schuyler, Nebraska, at the Benedictine Monastery, they were all cloistered because of the COVID virus, and a lot of them were older. So it was really interesting for the five-day silent retreat. I actually was in the desert, if you will, without receiving uh, our Lord in the Eucharist. So what was left was, okay, Lord, um, be with me in the spiritual communion, and I would pray through the Mass readings every day, which was good, and it was very beautiful, but it made the reception of the Eucharist at the ordination all the more powerful. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So... God brought some light out of that desert. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Um, Father, when uh, we started opening back up and communicating people, I mean, did you have people with tears in their eyes as they as they approached to receive for the Blessed Sacrament? And it's very movement for us, probably as in our daily celebration of the Mass by ourselves, we are not able to see this. But when the people come back to receive the Holy Communion, really we can identify they are thirsting from God's mercy, compassion, the real presence of God living with them. That is uh, and are very remarkable. And also afterwards, the people express that uh, joyful, that inner encounter with peace, with the real presence of God as well. It's a very remarkable experience. You know, one of the things that struck me was because, of course, we, we priests weren't in the fast in the same way because we had to celebrate Mass every day. Um, th- th- there were several of our brothers that, were so moved by the people's plight that they wanted themselves to go on a kind of Eucharistic fast. Um, and, and you know, there's some theological confusion that's happening there. But the motivation is understandable that you want to be in solidarity with, with your people. But um, it, was, it was one of my parishioners who gave me this insight. She said, Father, you know, when, uh, when a, a woman first has a baby um, and her body gets used to making milk, she's often, um, her stomach gets upset easily, and so it's hard to eat. Uh, but you have to eat because you have to be able to feed your baby. So she said, it's okay that you guys are still receiving communion and we're not because we need you to stay strong so that you'll be able to feed us when the time comes. Wow. What a beautiful image, right? That's it, man. Really a spiritual metaphoric language to use to understand how God's love us and waiting for us as well. Nick, any insights from the communion calls you've been making to the elderly and the homebound? Yes, um... Many times people have actually shown up and they're watching Sunday Mass and they pause it um, at the time for communion. And then I walk in and, you know, I um, distribute communion to them. Uh, You know, they finish out Mass and then we have a bit of a chat afterwards. But 
that's been really powerful to me as just the image of me. It's just an extension of the mass. I'm bringing communion to them from, you know, perhaps from that very mass. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, from Sunday we had quite a few hosts, so definitely this week <laughs> it will be from Sunday mass. Um, and um, and so that's been very powerful. And, be, and yeah, just the um, pretty much every time I come to someone new, they haven't received communion in quite a while. And so it's been uh, special in that way too. Father, uh, let us give thanks to God for all the good gifts that he's given us and especially for the gift of the Holy Eucharist. May the one who in ancient times multiplied five loaves and two fish to feed the hunger of so many multiply now every good grace in our hearts, our souls, and our spirits. The Father, and the Son, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be not afraid. Iowa Catholic Radio. Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Also tune in Sundays at 10.30 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists and Dream Dirt, Farm Real Estate and Auction Services.